does not score, there will be no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Alex Wallow, the pattern of Hearns' recent fights, sensational starts in the first round. He has not always, however, been able to finish his opponents. Thomas used to set up his big, big right hand power with a left jab. Recently, especially in the Schuler fight, he has set it up with a left hook underneath. First round of 12 as Thomas Hearns tries to become the 12th man in boxing history to win three separate world championships. The, link to, the thing to look for right off the bat is, is Thomas Quick. Is he as quick as he once was, carrying all of this weight? As you can see, it's not flat. It looks sensational. That is not always the proof of the pudding. You saw the Andres jab and then the Hearns jab. The Hearns jab landed and it was quicker. Andres has traditionally been a slow starter. As we've said a couple of times already, Hearns is a very fast starter. It's probably been a long time since Thomas Hearns has faced a fighter as awkward and unorthodox as Dennis Andre. He will throw punches from various different angles, few of them classic in form. Again, Hearns wins the battle of the jab. So far, I think Thomas is respecting the Andre's power. He has not tried to dig down with that left hook to the body because that leaves him open to Andre's powerful right hand. And this is not the kind of fast start that Hearns is shown in recent bouts as Andres drives him back into the ropes. With that right hand, it sometimes looks amateurish, it's sometimes lunging. That time it caught Hearns at the end of the punch and didn't do too much damage, but he can hit. There you see the kind of unorthodox blow which typifies Andre Scott. Looping punches. Exactly right, he is vulnerable straight up the middle because he does loop almost all his punches with both hands. Hearns trying to deliver the right, but the message wasn't there. Thomas pacing himself a little bit more than we might have expected. Boxing a little bit more. There's the good right hand. Right hand. And Andres hangs on. And that has been the first legitimate event of this first round. The one Thomas Hearns right hand toward the end. Queen. WBC light heavyweight champion Dennis Andres in the black trunks and Thomas Hearns of Detroit fighting in his hometown in Kobo Arena and wearing the gold trunks. A largely uneventful first round was defined in the last 12 seconds by a Hearns right hand. Just saw Andres try five jabs. There's a six and seven. None of them have landed. But that really is something new for him. He just up until his first title offense against Tony Simpson, he really didn't have a jab at all. He's trying to develop that. It's a heck of a time at age 33 as a world champion to try to develop a jab. Indeed, he has adopted a much more classic pose, at least for the first round and a half, against Hearns than we had seen in some of his previous bouts against Tony Simpson, TNT Brody, and J.B. Williamson, the man he beat to win this title. Staggered by the right hand. Talked about Andres being wide open. He missed a punch and Hearns counter with the right hand beautifully and hurt it. Thomas is taking his time. He should try some body punches. And now we can begin to judge Hearns' punching power as a light heavyweight. We can also judge if Thomas has learned how to finish an opponent. He's had trouble in his last two fights finishing. Be careful also because Andres is still dangerous. Chopping right hand by Hearn. 
Upside, upside. There was the left hand of the body that missed. Good enough to get the right end. Thomas got hurt with that counter by Andres. And you and see he Hearns on. grab immediately, grabbing Andres by the neck. He was stunned by the right hand. appears to be regaining some of his wits and his legs. Hearns has blood around the corner of his left eye. Thomas holding and hitting there. That is attack and complaining about the head. Okay. If it becomes a brawl, that is not to Hearns' advantage. At this way, Jim, Thomas Hearns may not still have the ability to move and use the boxing skills he did at lighter weights. Andres has made it out of the second round. Lobo Arena. Thomas Hearns, in his last fight on October 17 against Doug DeWitt, was cut over the right eye, and largely due to great work on the part of Ralph Citro, his cut man, was able to last the fight and win a unanimous decision. Now he has been cut in the second round. We are yet to determine whether or not it was the result of a punch or a butt. But Citro has already had to go to work today. And Ralph Citro told Thomas in the corner, don't worry, Tommy, it's not bad. Don't worry about it. But you see Hearns trying to box here and move, maybe perhaps to protect the eye, perhaps he thinks it's the best uh, strategy against this awkward opponent. The good news in that second round was Thomas did hurt Andres. The bad news was he got hurt and he got cut. The third round begins to assume a different complexion as, as Alex pointed out, Hearns is more the boxer. Watch how open Andres is. He looks almost like a Kronk fighter carrying his left hand so low. He's just wide open. And Thomas has been successful with counter punches. There, he got hit low and he retaliated. And this referee is 10 feet away from the action and walking away. He is not in control at this point, Isaac Herrera of Panama. Well, he certainly allowed Andres to hold at will for a while in the second round before finally stepping in. And he's not even in the picture, as you see. We want to alert our local stations along the line. There will be a station break coming up at the end of this round. Station break in a minute and a half. This Detroit crowd loves Thomas Hearns, but they are a critical crowd. If they don't, if Thomas does not satisfy them with the kind of spectacular action he's provided them with over the years, they will get on his case. He knows that. And he I was, think he's partially tailored his style to satisfy the crowd. He talked at the top of the show about how much he felt that he disappointed people against Hagler. And he was booed against Mark Medal in Las Vegas last year. And booed against Doug DeWitt uh, most recently in his most recent fight here in Detroit. I think Thomas should ignore the fans and, and try to win the fight the best way he can. And I think that's at least to try to use his superior skill. Andres, I, I really don't think it's going to work. Good jab. Right now, Thomas is trying to dictate the pace of this fight, and he's being successful. Andres is waiting for him. He just missed that right hand on the point of the chin. And in the third round, Andres has not gotten a glove near the cut on Thomas Hearns' left eye. Station break coming up must system, you would have to think that Thomas Hearns has won the first three rounds. Cut man Ralph Citro again went to work on the cut at the corner of Hearns' left eye at the end of the third round. It is a small cut. Jab landed, Andre's two jabs and a right did not. And Dennis Andres is right now waiting too much. He should be trying to turn this fight into a brawl. He should be trying to mug Thomas Hearns. He should be lunging at him. Instead, he's trying to out-jab him, and he's just not going to do that. 
Clark Thomas with a good jab there. And he caught him on the side of the face where the cut is, and the blood has begun to flow just a little bit again. Henry, repeat, it does not look like a serious deep cut. I think Thomas is fighting a very conservative fight right now. Trying to right hand there, but he is not opening up. He's content just to flick the jab, try to catch Andres coming in. I think for two reasons. One, the cut, but also the punch he caught in the second round has made him respect Andres' power. That is a good body punch. Perhaps a little bit low. And Andres, by moving forward and throwing punches now, is giving Hearns the opportunity to counter in this round, and he's doing so very effectively. Right, but he should be trying to get in and smother. He shouldn't come in and allow himself to be hit coming in, but he should just come in and try to smother Thomas' a superior reach and work on the inside. Andres has a, has a good uppercut. He got caught again there coming in, Jim. If you think Andres has the look of a desperate fighter in exchanges like that, he looks that way all the time. That's just the way he fights. Indeed, he looked exactly that way in winning a decision over J.B. Williamson to win the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship he has brought into the ring today. But in that fight, and in his fights with Brody and Simpson, he was often able to put his opponents on the ropes and maul them. He has not had Hearns near the ropes since the first round. Andre's head is coming in. It didn't connect then, but when he comes in in those rushes, his head is a battering ram. Round four, another round in which Thomas Hearns has been able to stand at the center of the ring and control the action. Thomas Hearns against champion Dennis Andre's WBC light heavyweight title at stake. Hearns trying to become the 12th man in boxing history to win three separate world championships. And some of the names of the men who have done that are indeed important in the history of the sport. People like Barney Ross, Henry Armstrong, Stanley Ketchell, and Bob Fitzsimmons, Emil Griffith, Roberto Duran, Alexis Arguello. Hearns tries to join them today. catching Andre's lunging in. He seems content right now to do that. In case you have joined us late, we remind you this is Thomas Hearn's first trip ever as a light heavyweight. He is in unknown territory, and he's taking a conservative path through this unknown territory. There he moves in. Now he looks like he's trying to drill that left hook underneath and maybe come across with the right hand. Now he's stalking his man. Regaining the confidence which he showed, particularly in the early stages of round two, when he hurt Andres with the right hand. Now he's later rocked himself. No, 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 Don't you ask right, I like him. Come here, come here. You hear the referee Herrera's broken English and giving instructions to the fighters. One of the WBC key. rules call for a neutral official, Jim, but it's hard to understand why they couldn't get an English-speaking official. Outside, outside, dummy, don't you? Two English-speaking uh, fighters. Okay. Referee once again is Isaac Herrera of Panama. He has not been much of a factor up to this point. Okay. Oh, a low blow. Okay, go get it. No, actually, Okay. <laughs> Thomas says, let him hit you low and you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> then say it's okay, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Don't do it. Okay, again. Very good fight there. Woo! Okay, got it. in which Andres has not been able to do what he ought to be doing. 
trying to turn the fight into a brawl. And that time, he made Andres miss with the right hand, but he didn't have the reaction to come back with his own right counter. This championship fight is scheduled for 12 rounds, and we begin round six. On my card up to this point, Alex, Hearns has won the first five rounds. That's correct. There hasn't been a lot in the last three rounds, but I think Thomas has won them. He hasn't, however, taken over the fight and dominated at Venice. There's a right hand! Determined, gutty, durable performer, and that's really about all he's got. And that's all he has in the fight right now. His only hope is that Thomas Hearns will punch himself out. And Thomas has done that in the past as a middleweight. He looks there like he's trying to get air. Passed as a middleweight. He looks there like he's trying to get air. of the referee, this bout has proceeded into the seventh round. Well, let me say this, Jim. Herrera has let Andres back in this fight, and it's possible now that Andres can get back into the fight, I think, because Thomas is tired. Another right hand by Hearns. Isaac Herrera has refereed 31 world title fights. 
either he's uh, undergoing amnesia or he didn't learn very much in those fights. Because regardless of whether Andres is now able to right himself and get back into the fight, Herrera took unnecessary chances with his health in the preceding round. I mean, Andres was in no condition to continue. He's flopping all over the ring. The fact is that with all of the uh, flop downs and the time Andres got to regain himself, while Herrera cleaned his gloves, he went to the canvas, I think, six times in that round. Thomas needs to collect himself right now. He's obviously in control of the fight. That might have been a three-point round. The six. I don't think he can lose a decision at this point. He just must be very careful that Andres doesn't get back in the fight and that he doesn't run out of gas. Well, just as Herrera is open to question, certainly any official who scored that round 10-9 is open to question, too. But now Andres is starting to rally a bit and has Hearns against the ropes where he can be most effective. Absolutely. Thomas is dead tired right now. We will see if he can get a second win. But right now, Dennis Andres, the champion, is the pressure of the two fighters. During that time, if Dennis Andres has the ability right now to jump on Thomas when he's trying to recover himself, he could do some tremendous damage. Body jab by Thomas, enough. And then the right hand, but it deflected off Andres' shoulder. Oh, those body punches by Andres, he scored a left and, and two rights away to any spring that's left in Thomas Hearn's legs. And you see the awkwardness which sometimes makes Andres look so bad, but in other words, makes him, or in other ways, makes him so effective. He's not at all afraid to get hit. We have come to the end of the seventh round. We'll be back. We are back live in Kobo Arena. Round eight of what has become an odd fight. Champion Dennis Andres, holder of the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship, may, at least in my estimation, have just won a round for the first time in the fight. I think he did win the round, and I think he could continue to win rounds if he puts pressure on Thomas. The key punch, I think he should use that right hand to the body. If you remember Thomas's losses to Leonard and to Hagler, in both cases, it was a body punch, I think, that contributed in a large part to Thomas's running out of gas in both fights. It started with the beginning of the end. Andres can really thump with that right hand to, to Thomas's left side, and he should be trying it more often. Hearns has always possessed the spectacular torso with the washboard stomach, and often, fighters of that description do not take body punches as well as you might suspect they could. Now, I think it's also tall fighters. There's a theory in boxing. If you get very stretched out, you don't take it very well to the body. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line that at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. That right hand missed by Thomas Hearns. We should report that between the last two rounds, Ralph Citro has not even come into the corner, uh, into the ring, to work on Thomas Hearns' eye. That eye has been closed. The cut, which has been closed. What did I say? The eye, excuse me. Yeah. yeah, the cut has been closed. Quite correct. Another right hand up high in the head of Andres. Andres has been down coming into this fight only twice in his career. In both cases, it was right hands high on the head. He takes a punch on the chin better than he does up in the temple area. occasions were not called knockdowns by referee Isaac Herrera. One clearly was. The other time it was just Andres unable to stand up. 
Well, Ernst Connor getting very excited about that combination, but at this stage, Thomas doesn't appear to have the power to hurt Andre. But a good inside right, flush to the side of the head. But an arm punch, Jim. I mean, with no leverage of his body in it at all. We'll be back. More of Hearns and Andres right after this word from the stations themselves. Round nine of the WBC Light Heavyweight World Championship fight between Thomas Hearns of Detroit, Dennis Andres of England. Hearns becoming, or attempting to become, I should say, only the 12th man in the history of boxing to win three separate world championships. If you've joined us late, you've already missed an eventful day. A lively crowd in Kobo Arena, a two minute, 55 second national anthem by the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin and a sixth round in which Dennis Andres, the champion, was on the canvas five times. Three of them ruled knockdowns officially by referee Isaac Herrera, who made a highly questionable decision in allowing the fight to go on. Now Hearns attempts to finish things off. Dennis Andres made a big mistake in the last round by letting Thomas back into the fight. He had Thomas tired. Good right hand. Andres just... I didn't see why he went down there. He might have slipped off the edge of the ring. Yes, he did. He looked back. Okay, throw me, come in. It's a huge 21-foot ring, but Dennis just used all of it. But Thomas got his second wind a little bit, won the last round, is now back in this fight and has regained control. Good body punch, one of the few that Hearns has elected to throw since he began scoring at will to the head. Another right hand. Andres is staggered again. And now it's the Andres legs right. that look bad. Right there. the jab and then the hook off the jab the first time Thomas has done it in the fight and he landed both punches the light heavyweight division is not what it was in years past during the reigns of Michael Spinks and Matthew Saad Muhammad and Dwight Kawi the light heavyweight division is a disaster area and in all likelihood Hearns is only here for this brief vacation another chopping right hand by Thomas the canvas hey, five of them officially knocked down I went to focus on it. all right and you saw the wild right hand that Thomas does not want to walk into it trying to finish Andres Stop right. Andres has a great chin but he's also in tremendous condition the ability to take this much punishment is a factor of conditioning round nine of 12 schedule. Andres defenseless against Hearns' right hand. Championship wrestling in Detroit. A disgusted Thomas Hearns goes to his corner. Round nine in. Is the WBC World Light Heavyweight Champion. And the fact that he holds that title is a statement on the light heavyweight division at this moment. Today, he has been on the canvas eight times in this fight with Thomas Hearns, and still the fight continues. Okay, okay, Tommy, don't go, don't go, okay. Before you think that might be a record, but you remember that Manuel Ortiz knocked down Bobby Hager 17 times pro debut this is not a knockdown give it a hand no more push okay the second occasion okay. on All which right. Andres right. has wrestled Hearns to the canvas Herrera said touch hands no more push <laughs> okay. outside outside remember me a good fight. well in gamblers parlance it's been anything but a push That's just exhaustion. There is no punch. He's looking for a count. <laughs> right. Take. Driver. Herrera is calling hey, that a knockdown. He's stopping the, the fight. fight to continue. Unbelievable. Well, he Thomas. only had to go down nine times. And Thomas Hearns has become the 12th man in boxing history to win a third. Just 
to become the first man ever to win four. We may have just seen Thomas Hearns' first and last fight ever as a light heavyweight. He has also made boxing history, Jim, in the fact that he is the only man to have first won a title at welterweight and then jump up to light heavyweight and win that championship. And there's a game, but a thoroughly outclassed Dennis Andres, a disappointed ex-champion. Do you think the fight told us anything at all about Hearns' ability to carry his punching power up to the higher weight class? It's difficult to say because of Andres as an opponent, but he did show an awful lot of guts, Jim. He got hung in there, he got his second win, and he finished the man late in the fight, unlike most of his fights. There you just see, that was called a knockdown. If you saw a punch, I did not. There were several fall downs. There were also some brutal knockdowns. There were several of the classic right crosses which have typified Hearns throughout his career going back to his days as an amateur. And that is just exhaustion and Dennis Andres just saying in his own way, no mas. So there it is, once a world champion as a welterweight, once a world champion as a super welterweight, now a world champion as a light heavyweight. We'll be back to talk to Thomas Hearns. Right now, let's go back to New York and visit Frank Gibbons. We'll be going back out to Kobo in just a few moments, and while the ice in the Sandry is down, Tremendous fight. If you're with us all the way, something like nine or ten knockdowns in that fight. We'll be going back out to Jim and Alex in just a few moments. Bouncing oh. by technical knockout in the tenth round. Thomas Hearns has become the WBA or WBC, I should say, light heavyweight champion with this victory over Dennis Andres. And right now, Alex Wallow stands by in the ring to talk to the hitman. Alex? Congratulations, Thomas. Thank you, you Alex. You said to, in an interview before the fight that this fight would put you one mile from home. One mile. You know, that's just, just like going through road work, going six and seven miles a day. Trying to do that last mile is hard. That last mile is winning the fourth title. Will you go down immediately and fight again at middleweight? Well, right now it's about taking my time and just relaxing for a while and get over this fight because this was a hard fight for me. I just got to relax for a while, probably about uh, four or five months, and then I come back and fight again. How comfortable were you carrying that uh, 173 pounds, Thomas? I felt very strong. I have to admit, this is the way for me. And I think I owe this all to my manager, Emmanuel Stewart, for giving me a great training. Also, for my ace cool fine partner helped me all the way through, was there all the way with me from day one. This is Seal called Clance Osby. And Clarence also, is the sparring part of the spar with Thomas. Thomas, let me ask you one question. I want to say one thing. Go ahead. Uh, what got me the strength and the doings that I needed to go through this fight, I'm using knowledge now. Knowledge helped me build myself, got myself strong. It didn't bulk me up. It didn't make me bigger, it just made me stronger. Thomas, did, was, were you hurt in that second round? No, I wasn't hurt. I was, I was hit with a good shot, so I wanted to move off because I know this man was a big man. He was uh, something different from what I was uh, used to boxing or being in there with. He was a lot stronger, so I had to move around and just pace myself. I didn't want to go all the way out. When I hurt uh, Dennis in, the, I think, what, third or fourth round, I hurt him. And I, I went out a little bit more than I should. I should have just took my time and picked a shot. But I went to him. I tried to get him out early because I know he was a strong man. Do you hope now, Thomas, do you still hope in your heart to get a rematch with the winner of the Leonard Hagler fight? Oh, I would like that very much. I really want the winner of, the, of that fight. I think that that fight right there is definitely history for me. I don't care who wins. It can be, it can be Ray Leonard or it can be Marvin Hagler. Come on.